Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you five useful character functions in SAS. So let's get started. Our first function is compress. In this example, we create a string variable with the text Luke Q Skywalker Jedi Master. We can use the compress function to remove all kinds of character and punctuation values. In the first line, we create a new variable named spaces and use the compress function on our string variable. Typically the syntax would include other arguments, but if you leave out the other arguments, the compress function will remove all spaces from the string. So let's run this code. And we see that all spaces have been removed. But compress can remove more than spaces. And the next line, we remove commas. By adding a second argument, of a comma in quotes, that tells SAS to remove commas. So let's run this code. And we can see that the comma was removed. The third line introduces the third argument for the compress function, modifiers. The modifiers AK tell SAS to keep only characters from the alphabet. Notice that we need to include the second argument with quotes with nothing inside. If we left this out, SAS would think AK was the second argument and get rid of A's and K's. And when we run this code, we see that the punctuation was removed and we're left with only alphabetic characters. In the fourth line, we're removing all of the L's from the string. And the I modifier tells SAS to ignore case so it will remove uppercase L's and lowercase L's. So let's run this code. And we can see that it got rid of the uppercase L in Luke and the lowercase L in Skywalker. In the last line, we remove all of the punctuation in the string using the P modifier. Again, we need to include the blank string in the second argument. And we can see that the comma and the period were removed. But the P modifier also removes spaces. If you wanted to remove punctuation but not spaces, you could use the punctuation characters in the second argument. So if we added a comma and a period here and got rid of this modifier and then run this code, we see that it got rid of the comma and the period. Be sure to look in the description to find links for more examples and more modifiers that you can use. Our second function is scan. The scan function allows you to return a string in a list when there is a delimiter. And the delimiter can be anything and often is a space. In this example, we create a list of colors. The colors are separated by a comma, which is our delimiter. What we wanna do is assign each of these colors to its own variable. To do that, I created an array named colors that includes six variables, colors one through color six. Then we use a do loop to move through our array, one to six. Within each iteration of the do loop, we use the scan function on the list. To assign the color value to our array variable, the syntax for scan is the word scan followed by open and close parens. Inside the parens are three arguments. The first argument is the text. In this case, the variable name list we want to use with scan. The second argument is the position of the string value based on the delimiter. And the last argument is the delimiter. In this case, it's a comma. So the first iteration of our do loop looks like this. The first one is colors one because it comes from this variable here and our iteration would be one. In the second iteration, I increments to two, this becomes colors two and this iteration number becomes two. So when I equals one, we refer to the variable list and look for the string in the first position. The string in the first position is red because it's the first text to the left of the first comma. The string in the second position is green 
because it's after the first comma and before the second comma. The string in the third position is blue and so on. So let's remove this and run this code. And we can see that the color red was assigned to colors one. The color green was assigned to colors two. The color blue was assigned to colors three, and so on. This kind of code block is a really handy way to transform one data source to fit another. I use it frequently to make data conform to federal reporting standards. I wanted to show you how to use scan with an array like this because it's a very practical application of this function. But a simpler way to describe how this works is by simplifying and getting rid of the array. For example, we could just keep the scan line by deleting this and this, and then change the variable name, colors one, and our iteration number to number one. And if we ran this, we see that colors one was assigned the value of red. If we change the iteration number to two and ran it again, we see that colors one is now green, corresponding to the second color in the list. We change this to three, run it. Now we see that colors one is blue, the third color in the list. We could also go from the back side and use negative one. That should make yellow the value assigned to colors one. Let's run this and see if that worked. And yes, we see yellow was assigned to colors one. Our third function is the substring function. In this example, we created a variable named idnum that contains a unique ID of a subject. This ID can be parsed into valuable information. The first two characters are the state of residence for the subject. The third through fifth characters are the county of residence. The sixth through ninth characters is the applicable year. And the 10th through 15th is a sequence number assigned to a subject in the same county and year. We can use a substring function to extract these pieces of information and save them to variables. For example, here we use substring to assign the state code to the variable state. The syntax for substring starts with the word substr, followed by open and close parens. Inside the parens are three arguments. The first is the name of the string we're parsing. In this case, it's idnum coming from here. The second is the starting position of the section of characters we want to extract. The third is the length of the section we want to extract. So for this example, we're starting at position one and grabbing the first two characters. Position one is here. The first two characters are these. For county, we're starting at position three and grabbing the next three characters. Year starts at position six and includes four characters. And sequence starts at position 10 and include six characters. So let's run this code. And we can see that the state code for California was saved to state. 001, which corresponds to Alameda County, was saved to county. The year 2021 was saved to year, and the number 223556 was saved to the variable sequence. What if the length of our ID num varied but we knew we wanted to retrieve just the last six characters. Unfortunately, for substring, we can't go from the back side. For example, by entering negative six. Instead, we can calculate the length using the length function of id num, and then subtract six from that. That tells us the starting position of the sequence number. And you'll see that when we run this code, we get the correct number for the sequence number. Our fourth function is cat. These include a few variations of the cat concatenation function. We're gonna focus on two of them, cats and cat x. The first one I'm gonna go over is cats or cat s. You see we created first, middle, and last name variables and assign the values of Luke, Q, and Skywalker to them. We can combine these names into one full name using the cats function. The syntax for cats is simple. After typing the function name cats, 
you include all of the character variables or text strings you want to combine in the order you want to combine them. Here we added first, middle, then last. However, cats doesn't add anything in between these string variables, so they are going to be squished together. So when we run this code, we see that the full name is squished together without any spaces in between. So cats is more useful, for example, for combining state, county, year, and sequence into a unique ID than it is for combining names. The next line uses the cat x function. The first argument for cat x is the delimiter we want to put between each of our combined text strings. Here we use the space character, which will put a space between each of these names. So let's run this code. Now this is more of what we were looking for. It includes each of the names with a space in between. Note that both cat s and cat x remove leading and trailing spaces. So if we add some spaces in these name values here and then run it again, we see that the full name looks the same. We can use whatever delimiter or combination of characters we want in our first argument. In this line, we use the comma space delimiter and put last name before first name. And when we run this, we see that our value for cat x is in last name comma first name format. We don't have to use a variable in our cat functions. They can also be text strings. In this line, I hard-coded the name Vader. So if we had a file with multiple records, all names would have the last name Vader. So let's run this code. Now we see Luke Vader. Our fifth function is translate. In this data step, we created a variable named string that contains the value Luke Skywalker. Then here, we use the translate function. The syntax is the word translate followed by open and close parens. The first argument inside the parens is the name of the string variable or value we want to translate. The second argument is the replacement characters. The third argument are the characters we want to replace. The important thing to note is that the first character in position one here, lowercase l in this case, will be replaced by the character in position one of these characters, in this case, uppercase Z. And every instance of lowercase a will be replaced by uppercase X. So let's run this. And we can see that our lowercase l in Skywalker was replaced by uppercase Z. And our lowercase a in Skywalker was replaced by uppercase X. There's a really useful application of this function for converting values for variables that are just one character. Here, I created a data set named sexvals that include single character values for three records, one for male, one for female, and one for unknown. And when we run this, here you can see what the data set looks like. Just three records with one column, sex with three different values, male, female, unknown. In this data step block, we set the sex vals data set and use the translate function on sex, converting M to one, F to two, and U to nine. And we see that our values were translated as we expected. Normally to do something like this, I either write a line for each of these three conversions, male to one, female to two, and unknown to nine, or when there are lots of values that need to be converted, I create an array. But for single character values, this can greatly decrease the amount of code needed. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you were able to pick up some tricks and see some real world examples for how these functions can be used. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.